Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Reading with Grandma. We're going to continue our book, The Boy with the Helium Head. We left off with Jonathan floating in the air and the doctor giving him a sign, a piece of paper that says, no crawling in chimneys, obey all traffic signals, and watch for low ceilings, and to drink plenty of water and keep your shirt on, the other doctor said. So now we're going to continue with Chapter 5 and see how long it takes Jonathan to come down. So Chapter 5 is called The Boy in the Air. No one knew what to do while Jonathan had helium in his head. I do not know what to tell you, Mrs. Bogley, said old Doc Mack, but he should be kept as comfortable as possible. Jonathan said he would like to go outside, to stay outside. I don't want to be tied to my bed to keep from rising, he told his mother, but I certainly do not want to spend the time pressed against the ceiling of my room. The day was warm and the sky was clear, so Mrs. Bogley said that he could stay outdoors. Jonathan decide, decided to make the most of the strange situation. He walked along the telephone wires, ba balancing carefully. When he slipped off, he simply bobbed back up again. There below him, Duke Duncan watching. Next, Jonathan skimmed the roofs of all the shops on the block. He dropped down a kite he had found twisted around a chimney. He threw down a ball that was stuck in a rain gutter. When he came to the end of the shops on the street, he stepped off and walked through the air to the roofs on the other side. Duke Duncan tagged along below, saying nothing. When he got to the park, Jonathan air walked to the trees and bobbed about the branches. He peeked into birds' nests and startled the squirrels. Poor birds probably didn't know what to make of it, a boy up there. But whenever he looked down, there was Duke Duncan. How about a game of baseball, Jonathan? Some friends called. You can play center field. When a batter hit the ball high in the air, Jonathan caught it. Jonathan's team won. They played basketball next. When Jonathan had the ball, he simply bobbed over to the basket and dropped the ball inside. This is the life, he thought. No Duke Duncan, no baby Sam. He wished, began to wish he could go on like this forever. Chapter 6, A Night in the Sky. That evening, Mrs. Bogley said, Jonathan, play with Sammy, please. I want to make dinner. Jonathan came into the house. He walked upside down on the ceiling. Baby Sam laughed and waved his fat arms. Mrs. Bogley made a chicken pie and a salad. Jonathan ate them outside, sitting high on a church steeple. He waved to the airplanes that passed. He called hello to the people below. When he found an olive in his salad, he simply spit it out. There was no one to tell him what to do. As evening fell, Jonathan bobbed around in the air until dark. A light came on in Dr. Mack's house as he passed. Dr. Mack, Jonathan discovered, wore a wig. A light came on in the mayor's house. The mayor, Jonathan saw, had false teeth. As he bobbed by Duke Duncan's house, Jonathan looked through the window. He saw Duke in his room. Duke had on a pair of boxing gloves. Jonathan swallowed. When it was time for bed, Jonathan's mother gave him a blanket and a pillow. He went to sleep above, above the clock at City Hall. Jonathan dreamed that Duke Duncan had crawled up the side of the building in the night and was about to slug him. When he woke up the next morning, Jonathan found that he had rolled about quite a bit. He had rolled several blocks, in fact. His blanket was tangled in the weather vane above the post office. And there below was Duke Duncan waiting. Jonathan tried not to think about what would happen when he came down. Chapter 7, Helping the Mayor. The newspaper had Jonathan's picture on the front page. The radio carried his story on the morning news. The local television station sent out a crew. They filmed Jonathan eating breakfast on the flagpole. Maybe the doctors were wrong, Jonathan said to himself. Perhaps the helium would stay in his head for a long time, forever even. Maybe he would be the first boy to live his life on a flagpole. If he lived in the air, he could cross streets without looking. He could watch football games without buying a ticket. He would have the very best seat to watch fireworks on the 4th of July. All he had to do when he wanted to go down was to grab hold of a drain pipe or of a telephone pole and lower himself to the ground. The mayor thought of all kinds of things that Jonathan could do for the city. Would you change the burnt out light bulbs in the street lights, he wanted to know. Jonathan did. Would you paint the steeple, he asked. Gladly, said Jonathan. 
String up some lights for us, said someone else. Polish the bell, shingle a roof, hook up a clothesline, trim a tree. Now, don't they realize this boy is only seven years old? How is he going to do all that? There were more and more jobs to do for a boy who could walk on air. Some space scientists came from Washington. They wanted to see if Jonathan could put on his socks and shoes while bobbing above overhead. They wanted to know if he could drink a glass of milk upside down. Chocolate, please, said Jonathan, and he did just fine. He even saw some robbers running out of the bank. Because he was up high in the air, he saw where they went. He told the police, and the robbers were soon in jail. Wonderful job, said the chief of police. Wonderful job indeed. If only the fun would last. Chapter 8, Coming Down By two that afternoon, however, before he had done half the things he would like, Jonathan began to sink. By three, he was no higher than the fir trees. By four, he was as low as the roof on this house. By five, he had reached the window frames, and by six, his feet were touching the ground. Duke Duncan was there, but so was a brass band. Jonathan was given a ride around town on a fire truck. Baby Sam waved one fat fist at him from, the, from his stroller. For dinner that evening, Mrs. Bogley had made chocolate syrup, mashed potatoes with chocolate gravy, chocolate meatballs, and for dessert, a big chocolate layer cake topped with chocolate ice cream and chocolate fudge sauce. They listened to the story of the boy with the helium head on the evening news. They saw the tape of the parade and with Jonathan waving to the crowd. On Monday, however, everyone seemed to have forgotten about Jonathan. The newspapers had been thrown out with the morning trash. The brass band was playing in another town. The TV was talking about Texas and taxes. Jonathan Bogley was just another boy with big feet. But Duke Duncan didn't forget. When Jonathan got to school, Duke was waiting. When Jonathan sat down, Duke stood up. When Jonathan stood up, Duke stood up. Whenever Jonathan, wherever Jonathan did went, Duke followed. And to everyone they met, Duke said proudly, I was the first to see him go up, honest, and to think that he, Jonathan Bogley, actually sat on my sandwich. And that is the end of the story of the boy with the helium head. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And make sure you leave a comment on if you liked it or not and what you'd like to hear. Ring the bell so you know when I'm reading another story. Hit the subscription button and make sure you give it a good thumbs up. This was a real fun story. I hope everybody enjoyed it. Keep reading and have a wonderful magical day. Bye.